Hi folks, this is Garlic again with the Living Medicine Project. And uh, I wanted to make this video today. I've actually been chewing on this idea for a while now, but I was inspired because I heard about the Google search results for 2020. And, uh, and a lot of the questions were why? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? And so the topic of this uh, vlog is why, why? is often the wrong question uh, because it doesn't get us the results that we're looking for. And there's a couple of different reasons. And so we're going to look through the lens of uh, connection first, and then we're also going to look through the lens of, um, of healing and growth. So first thing, uh, start with a quick story. I walked into the kitchen the other day and I stepped in a bunch of cold water just outside the fridge and I said, why is there water on the floor? But of course, that's not a question, right? That's why I've drawn the little cute little exclamation there. Uh, because often we use why as some rejection of reality, you know? Um, that if we, and I, and I challenge you to, to, to try this. Don't try to change anything about what you're doing. Just start out noticing. Noticing when you ask why and whether it's actually a question or not. Because I think what you'll find is that frequently, when it's not a question, when it ends with an exclamation, it's actually some aspect of reality that you're having trouble accepting, that you don't want to accept. I didn't want to accept that my sock was soaked and that I needed to go and change it. And I didn't want to accept that that's happened lots of times before. Um... So that's the first piece. And then, so what happens there, right? My youngest son, who probably innocently spilled a bit of water while he was taking his cold water out of the fridge because he loves cool water, um, he probably just spilled a little. And when he heard me say, why is there water on the floor? It created a disconnection between us. And that is going to make it harder for me to actually find out. Even if I do get to a place of being able to ask the question of why with this important sense of curiosity, because that's the thing about why, is it's dangerous. I'll get to a, yeah that dangerous piece in just a moment, but I want to just say first that it's there's like a, if we're going to get anywhere with the question why, it needs to be driven by a really sincere sense of curiosity, you know, um, especially in relationship with other people because otherwise it's going to create disconnection. It's not going to, it's not going to feel safe emotionally for somebody to share what was going on for them or why that, why that, that happened. Okay. The other piece and why it can be dangerous is that why is a question that is often used as a fault finding exercise. And so fault finding almost always like somewhere in the 120% of the time creates disconnection between people. It doesn't create the atmosphere of, uh, of understanding, of, of empathy, of safety. Like, oh, if I tell this person, whatever, uh, sorry, sorry, Bubba, like I just, uh, I must have spilled some water and I didn't notice and so I didn't clean it up. That's going to be really hard. I mean, when you're nine, that sort of thing can be difficult. Uh, depending on how irritated my why was, it makes it more difficult or less difficult. Uh, even in other scenarios, though, uh, somebody's like, oh, what, like, why did this car accident happen? Why did that person get sick? Why, um, you know, why did I have this fight with my partner? Um, and these things tend to lead to finding what we believe is the cause, which is almost always conflated with finding fault. And fault gets in the way of genuine connection. And so, yeah, so those are the two main pieces around this connection piece. Uh, about why, why, the question why uh, tends to create disconnection between people. In terms of healing and growth, uh, there's another perspective, which uh, I'm 
borrowing more from the uh, like that that last piece was more about uh, you know interpersonal communication and stuff uh, and empathy. From a hypnotic perspective, what Y does is it actually locks things in. You know, outside of the fault finding, even if you find a way to uh, get the the cause without finding fault, it still makes that something that is locked in. When I'm working with my clients, almost the only time that I ever use the question why is when I want to find out why something worked for them. Because it helps to root it like an old tree. It helps to anchor it in there of like, oh, because when we have a reason, when we believe that we have a cause, we've got some story, then like the human mind is, is drawn, like it, it, we enjoy becauses. And if th- something adds up, then that gets a, a lot closer to something that's a fact. And facts uh, can be really difficult to change. However, sometimes we have the wrong facts and it leads us to having an incorrect perception, which either uh, decreases our, our capacity for growth uh, or eliminates or decreases our capacity for connection which also happens to decrease our capacity for growth and healing. So, the the other piece is that why doesn't always help? We have this idea, and I think because the scientific uh, metaphor, the scientific perspective is so uh, potent in our uh, technological uh, culture and society of today, that we want to look for reasons as if the genealogy or the cause can simply be changed. And so there's a, an assumption that if we ask why and we get the answer to why something happened, then we can change it. But that's not actually how change and healing works. What we need instead is to ask different questions. So to make this practical, I wanted to offer some of those different questions. You know, so the first question that I like to ask and I encourage all my clients to ask is how am I feeling about this? I know not everybody's going to like that. Sometimes I don't like that. My linear mind is activated and I'm just like, I want the reason. And I don't want to shift to the, the non-linear mind. I don't want to shift to the, to the right hemisphere, as some people would describe it, and think about relations, my relation to myself in this case. However... The, the less I want to do that, and I've found this also with my clients, the, the harder that is to do, often the more needed it is. Now, don't do it if you can't do it. Sometimes it's easier to ask the question, how is the other person doing? You know? Um, or what, what's the problem the way that you see it? You know? Uh, and be careful. Don't ask why in a different, in a different form and still have it be the same thing. How come you did this? Yeah, that's still why, right? Uh, What were you thinking when you did that? Mm, This is more or less just still why. So it's gonna create those, or run into those same blocks and problems. And then the other question is, that I I brainstormed just quickly here is like, what can I actually change about this? When I asked that of myself, uh, when my foot was soaked, I realized I could change my sock And I could get a rag and clean up the water so that it didn't happen to me the next time I went to the fridge and it didn't happen to anybody else. And then uh, that allowed me to to shift and to come up with a different strategy, um, or at least initiate a conversation with my son about a different strategy that we can come up with so that there's not quite so much spilled water directly in front of the fridge. Right? And so it allows, through that connection, it allows a level of uh, creativity that we both get to participate in that example uh, to come up with something that then works for both of us and everybody else in the house who doesn't like to step in cold water. There are a bunch of of, uh, applications for how this works and how we relate to our health. Like, why is my digestion off? Yeah, my clients, I get this this sort of thing all of the time and it almost always leads to self-blame, right? I, oh, I did this to myself. Oh, I ate the wrong thing. Or I did this and I did that and I shouldn't have done that and I knew better. And all of this stuff, which just sparks a shame spiral, which is disconnecting from ourselves and it's not helping with healing and growth. 
even when those things might be true. Yeah, maybe you ate something that had gluten in it and you didn't check the ingredients well enough and now you feel crappy uh, or whatever, right? Uh, it's still not going to help you uh, in the immediate to do anything other than blame yourself. So this video has turned into a longer video. I thought I could do this in three minutes and we're at 10 minutes. So I'm just going to cap it there. I hope this is useful. I would love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you have a different approach, a different strategy, uh, if you want to just report about how this, uh, this exercise, this awareness exercise of noticing when you say why and whether it's actually a question or not, you want to share those stories, I'd love to hear them. And of course, if I can do anything to help make uh, that process or, or uh, help with some healing, help with some more connection in your life, I'd be happy to do that. So again, I'm Garlic with the Living Medicine Project, and I will talk to you soon.